बाद मस्त बादा आशा में अहमदेय चलता है दौरे में नाम रबी साहब ओ यस So you're not watching the game tonight? Yeah, yeah. watching it straight after. All right, it's only one hour so you can. Yeah, we'll try to finish before 7:45 inshallah. Cool, cool. I don't know. You go going out with the uh, thingy these days, yeah? With Nasir. Ah, with Nasir. Yeah, we went to the farmhouse. It was like Oh, is it good? Nice man. It was really good. Was it? I've heard a lot about it. Have you? The food looks a bit messy though. Yeah. Wait, who who showed you the picture? Did you see Aslan's? I think it was one one of I think it was Nasir's snap for yeah. them. I mean, they had some white boy things. I don't know, some chicken parmesan or something. Or did you get? I had like a lamb shank. It was basically just gosh. <laughs> Proper <laughs> lad a lad meal. Yeah. That's good. Sounds nice though. Russian. You guys are going a lot more now, aren't you? Playing badminton and stuff as well. Yeah, like weekly. Like, come, you can come. It'll be better. Be. I remember when when we started playing, it was good. Yeah. Good, you guys have started. Yeah. Mashallah. It's just uh, you, Nasser, and Nakib now. And we bring some rays, but he's not very good. He he just started playing with us because he never played before. Okay. Yeah, that's good, Mashallah. As I think badminton is the best option now because football is a bit difficult to organize. It's dead every time. Have, yeah, you don't have enough people. There's a chance this Sunday because <laughs> you guys is old friend, you know. He's like saying oh, should we play so that might motivate some of them to put their names down. Yeah, inshallah. That's good. I want the national tournament to come around because I've never, I've never trialed, I've never took part. I want to take part, you know. But I'm not sure if it's going to be on this year. Hmm. I know. I know. Did um, Kasim message you? Um, about what? For Karakiv, he can't do the news today. No, he was. What did he say? Okay. Yeah, what was it? Abi. Assalamualaikum. Well, he's outside at the moment. He's getting his vaccination done. Oh, I had it on me. I didn't hear what anyone said. Okay, Mustafa, we're just saying that you're presenting the Khudam news today. Huh? I could tell Kashi said no, I did. Oh, Jacob, I'm joking. I don't think there's going to be news today guys cuz um your Qasim is uh, outside at the moment. Daniel's here so we have Kahoot Kahoot sorted. Um is Ishan is Ishan on as well? Oh, no, yeah, Remember, did you get the presentation for for Friday sermon? Yeah, I'm going to be doing it for sermon. You got it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Chalo. So we've got one person from Wolves, one person from Wolverhampton, three, four, four from. Uh... Kasim, are you on? Yes, I'm on. But are you here? Yeah, I'm on now, but I cannot access the presentation. Achha. I'm on my phone. Uh, the presentation is in my laptop. Can you do a fit body one? Sorry. Can you can you do off menu off your memory? Uh no. One minute roundup. <laughs> Uh no sorry. I'm sure you can, man. I'm sure you can. Yeah, he can. He can. But yeah, I'll I'll do something. Okay, so we'll just look at the front page news of the of BBC. Um, Tiga, Tiga. So guys, so today's a good day. Today's the England versus Scotland game. So we'll be done before that anyway. I'm sure because um we have six people and <laughs> then a few things to get through as well. But let me just show you show you the front page news of of BBC. The main thing is um, uh, obviously the match. It's going to dominate all the all the pages. Um, 
and they were showing a lot of the Scottish coming down through uh, by train from Scotland and you know just going crazy and they singing all their songs because there's a big rivalry and big history behind England versus Scotland. Um, one of the famous goals which Paul Gascoigne scored against the Scots, um, which has been been playing for the past few days just to rub it into the Scots' faces. Um, but it's going to be a tight game. Um, what do you guys think, the guys, uh, everyone? Who do you think will win this one? Mostly, what do you think? Uh, the one now, eh? Yeah. yeah. Inshallah, England. England and Dabad. What do you think, Atir? I think England have got it easy. What, what, what are you going for a scoreline? Um, like 2-3-1. Two, 2-3-1. Three, 3-1. One. Two, three, one. Three, one. Okay. Yeah, let's go three one. Okay. If we if we were Muslims, then I'm sure we'd be doing. Yeah, we'll put it back down. Paddy, paddy, paddy power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I reckon it's going to be a tight game. Uh, I think I think two two nil to England, but it's not going to be easy. But our defense is good, so I'm not worried about about conceding. Um, so yeah, more more things about Euros and I'm not too sure what this is because I haven't had time to really read into it. Um, but I'll just read it from it. The Daily Star takes a unique angle ahead of the England versus Scotland game. The reports that TV illusionist Yuri Geller says he will be using his powers to drive Scotland to a miracle victory tonight. The paper suggested wearing tin foil hats to repel Geller's powers, but the mystic says the paper's plan is destined to fail. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, foot walls coming home. I'm not too sure that that's talking about. <laughs> but let's read what it says. So the sun suggests Wally the walrus, an Arctic walrus who was spotted in Wales and Cornwall before heading to France earlier this year, is now back in the UK's shores, just in time for the England's crunch Euros crash with Scotland later. The paper says he has recently been basking in France and Spain, but his return to the Isles of Sicily is a good omen for England fans. <laughs> okay, so the, every year there's always um, there's always one animal which they which they select to choose uh, between who's going to win the Euros. Um, sometimes I think in the World Cup it was an octopus, um, and they have other animals as well. But it's good. this seems like for England, Mr. Walrus, what's his name? Wally the Walrus. Um, is showing us that we're going to win the Euros, inshallah. It's going to be hard. Um, these, this is also really important. Um, um, the Daily Mirror leads with the first of three reports from the inquiry into the Manchester Arena bombing, which was released on Thursday. The paper highlights the reaction of some sort of bereaved families who say their loved ones were failed because of the catalogue of inexcusable errors. So I think it was a few years ago, um, the bombings which happened in the Manchester Arena. Um, I think Ariana Grande was performing there. And one of the terrorist bombers uh, who let off a um, bomber jacket and attached to it were loads of um, bolts. So when it exploded, you know, it hit a lot of people and a lot of people died in that. Um, but now the recently the reports came out. Um, so from that report, obviously the people who lost their loved ones um, they weren't happy with it at all because a lot of it could have been avoided. Um, so there were just a few of the. This is what I was talking about with the with the fans coming in, um, as you know, with the with the Scots. You know, they have their their famous, um, you know, the skirts which they have and the bagpipes which they play. So they all come with that. So it's good for the country as well. It's good for Britain, even though there's a lot of political tension. Um, but a lot of that's been taken up through through sports, so that's also good. Um, and there are other just random bits of news here and there. Um, this one looks interesting. Um, Iran election front runners are pulled apart, so something happening in Iran with the elections. Um, so that's also good. So yeah, um, a lot of happening. Um, also with the vaccine, that's also really important. Uh, we need to look into that. I just wanted to pull one of the news items up. Qasim was telling me about it. Um, just give me a sec. Um, it's to do with, um, I just want to spark a, spark a small debate with everyone. So let me just pull up a piece of item first and then we can just talk about it quickly. 
um, is basically to do with um, homosexuals fighting for their rights to, to give blood. And in the UK recently, they've passed it, um, passed it so that men, so that people can actually um, give blood. But in a lot of the other countries, um, they aren't allowed to. So um, let's just read a small article. I'll just briefly go through it. Don't want to spend too much time on it, but just want to get everyone's opinion. Um, so blood donation rule change means more gay and bisexual men can give blood. So just reading it from the top, uh, blood donation rules for gay and bisexual men are being relaxed across the UK in what the government is calling a landmark change. Um, the new criteria focuses on individual behaviours lifting a blanket ban for any men who have had sexual intercourse uh, with men in the last three months. So uh, basically before this, um, a lot of people were were saying that it shouldn't happen because if you take the blood of someone who's homosexual, then you may be more um, prone to catching AIDS or HIV or any other disease. Um, so I want to ask you guys, do you think this is right? Do you think it's right for homosexuals to give blood? Um, and, you know, is it right? <laughs> Let me just ask you that first. We'll start from there. Obviously, because the, the, the trend of homosexuality is trending a lot. Yeah. So that's why it's probably made it into a big thing. Um, but what I would say, um, medically speaking, I know that they, for anyone who gives blood, they always check the blood before it gets approved. So it's not like you give blood and straight away they're going to put it in someone. They're going to always check it to see if it's pure and then they will give it to someone. And even then, um, when you do give blood, no one asks where it's come from or um, who it came from. So there is that side of it as well. Yeah, there's there's also it's also interesting. Like, I always thought like um, they've even they've even proven from organ donations as well, even through organ organ donations, the hormones of the previous person sometimes gets transferred as well. Um, and what's transferring that throughout the body is the blood. Um, yeah. So too with the with homosexual uh, homosexuality. What if those those um, feelings and emotions also gets transmitted into someone. And it's an interesting point. And, you know, is it right? That's the question. And what everyone's writing on social media now um, is that, you know, can we at least be told who the blood is come from? You know, is it, and so that we can make a choice whether we want it or not. But the only, the only downside is that there's so much shortage of blood yeah obviously the people who are in need of blood are in an emergency situation sometimes life and death so would they care where it's come from if it's going to save their life that's a good point so yeah obviously people want to give blood because they want to save people and it's a good thing to do um, and why should they why should they be you know categorized as a separate people just because of their their belief or whatever their actions are it's interesting yeah, it is definitely. Rabisa, what's the Islamic view on homosexuals? Like how should we treat them? Yes, obviously it's a side side topic of how they should be treated. Is they shouldn't be treated in any other way, any different way, because it's just their beliefs. I mean, it's just like anyone else, really. All your friends are gonna have different beliefs, aren't they? Um, and whatever they do in their private time, that's up to them. Everyone is. Everyone does different things, but um, as in the ways of behaving with them, you shouldn't. Uh, you can't persecute anyone for their beliefs, um, and that's that's the fundamental rule. But saying that, it doesn't mean that you have to make them purposely just because they're they different belief to yourself to make them your best friends or uh, always be close to them. Because at the end of the day, um, whoever you partake your company with you they're going to have an effect on you whether you have an effect on them or they have an effect on you so you always have to be be balanced with your friendships uh, but in terms of of your morals they always have to be of the highest excellence um, and you have to treat everyone um, correctly and just like Umar just wrote in the in the messages comments love for all hatred for none you know it's not uh, no, no one should be um, cancelled out or selected specifically to to go against um, so yeah that's that's pretty much it 
And do you want me to give other pieces of news? I'll try my best to remember as much as I can. Yeah, <laughs> you can if you can remember anything. All right. So uh, I'll try my best. So uh, first of all, the COVID update. Uh, 20 million people have had their second doses, uh, which is up from 10 million last week. So quite a lot of people were vaccinated this week. Uh, a bit of concerning news, though. Uh, I believe the uh, new cases have reached 50,000 or more. So there's a lot more new cases suddenly arriving due to the new variants. So I do urge everyone to uh, wear masks and keep themselves safe. Uh, a bit of UK news, the uh, lockdown has been extended to July, 19 July, I believe. So they're, they're increasing lockdown, uh, uh, but after that, more news has yet to be told. Uh, for the uh, coming allegations, also uh, there was a comment about how the simple text doesn't necessarily prove the uh, how the coming, uh, how the president, how the prime minister treats uh, coming, and it's not enough evidence to prove anything. Uh, more on the news about UK, uh, there has been a, a reveal that UK is not prepared for extreme weather and tsunamis. So, as you all know, this climate change has uh, the global warming is uh, rising, and as in this year especially, we have uh, cases in especially Pakistan where temperature is uh, 40 degrees or more, and even uh, 40 and uh, potentially reaching 50 as well. And even in other kind of, uh, countries, uh, specifically America, the temperatures have reached 50 degrees uh, Celsius. So global warming is definitely happening and UK are not really prepared for uh, thunderstorms and floods. Uh, more on uh, weather news, uh, there's actually a, a tornado happening in uh, America as well, which has been uh, destroying farmlands. Uh, a bit of scientific news, uh, a new uh, dinosaur skeleton was uh, discovered in uh, Australia, and it is believed to be uh, about 30 meters long, which is really large. So about 30 meters is about the size of a basketball uh, court. So uh, the finding suggests that this may be the biggest dinosaur. Uh, more on uh, oh, another scientific news. Uh, China has launched his uh, uh, their uh, rocket Shenzhou 12 into space, and it'll be a three month mission uh, where astronauts are going to collect data and then come back. Uh, also, as always, as usual, we had the discussion uh, uh, about the homosexual giving rights. A bit of informative news. Uh, if you might be wondering, a lot of people have been sneezing a lot lately and that's because due to hay fever it is common trend that in summer uh, grass grass hay fever is quite common in during the summer uh, so which is causing a lot of hay fever to sprout between people and they have been uh, sneezing a lot uh, in terms of uh, all right uh, another thing i forgot to mention uh, the uh, in Warsaw there has been an uh, opening of humanity first uh, food bank collection so uh, the volunteers are needed to uh, help the Humanity First uh, run their shop. Currently, they uh, have supported well over 100 families in just over a week. So it's a really successful and they always need more uh, food bank. So uh, uh, members are requested to at least donate one food item per month to help support the shop. And also, if possible, you can come visit them and also volunteer. Uh, for uh, the, the jobs, uh, they vary from running the shop and potential deliveries as well. Uh, they, uh, I'm not sure about the financial department, whether the financial, help, but uh, it's better if you contact uh, the relevant uh, people. You can contact my uh, gen general uh, secretary uh, for more guidance. Uh, I believe that's about it. Zakala for listening. I know it's not the usual PowerPoint and uh, it's a bit uh, off. So I do apologize for this. No, the Dakla custom is really good. Um, just on top of the food bank, Atir, could you just quickly come in? Because obviously you're directly involved. Um, for us other guys, we're kind of watching it from the outside. But how's it going on the inside? And you know, how what's it like on a daily basis? Um, um, well, I only come on Fridays and I've started coming recently. But like I'm sort of involved with the with the collection of food from supermarkets. To my knowledge, Alhamdulillah, it's going very well. 
there's a lot of demand, a lot of new people and a lot of repeats as well. So um, we're getting donations like from, from mosques a lot, from um, supermarkets. I, I arrange donations from Morrison's quite often. And uh, some people sometimes come in and give stuff. And I've seen that the demand is, is very high. Alhamdulillah, we've got a lot of good volunteers, a lot of Lujna as well. The Lujna work three days and the, and the men only work two. So Alhamdulillah, <laughs> like, everyone's playing their part. Yeah. And it's quite successful so far, I would say. Alhamdulillah. How can, how can the rest of us get involved? You know, Because we're not all living in Warsaw. So what can we do to, not just, obviously it's a bit difficult to come and give time, but anything else that we can do just to help out? So I think in some mosques, blue bins have been placed. So every now and then you can donate a food item. I think that's one way to help. Yeah. How does the blue bin get to the food bank? <laughs> I think uh, somebody will just come pick it up. I think when it's full, someone will get a message and, and then someone will arrange a delivery. Yeah, that's good. So I've been, I've been trying to remind everyone as well. Um, what kind of, because we don't really have um, a post or anything to show what to actually put in. So is there any examples of, you know, things that we can just go out and buy just to quickly put in the in the bin? There's so many things, but like, if you want to be safe, just tin food is like easy. Like, you know, baked beans or normal beans or even pasta or rice or yeah. biscuits or crisps. All these things that like are not going to expire within like two days. They're all fine. If you want to buy milk, buy long term milk. Yeah. Like basically yeah. anything that has a, a long shelf date. What, what's been what's been like the highest demand so far that you've seen and what do people really need most what do people need most yeah that they've been asking for most oh, that that i'm unsure of <laughs> i'll have to ask someone else i don't think i'm there often enough i've only <laughs> started my shifts yeah but yeah, yeah i can i can get an answer for you on that i think uh like beans seem to go fast and but some things stay there like we've got big cans of chopped tomatoes and it's like a, we've got a whole storage, three shelves of them, and they're not going anywhere because no one seems to cook and need them. Yeah, I guess we just need to tap into what the British like. And I guess baked beans is one of the <laughs> highest things. Most people are probably coming there to get their breakfast soil. <laughs> That's good, man. Zakla for that big. Guys, we need really need to push, especially guys in Birmingham West. I don't know about um, Wolverhampton. Amir, is there a bin in Wolverhampton Mosque? Uh, this is for the food bank you're referring to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The blue bin. Um, not that I know of, no. Um, I do know that uh, that Barakat Saab from Wolverhampton is partaking in the food bank. So he um, occasionally, not occasionally on a daily basis, uh, on a weekly basis or so, every other week, he, uh, he goes out and... Um, uh, buys uh, some cans or whatnot and donates it towards the food bank as well. Nice, nice, very good. Um, you know, we always say serve, serving God, but also serving humanity. They both go hand in hand. Uh, so it's a good opportunity for us to you know give to people who are less fortunate than us. So yeah, guys, um, Khudam, let's let's try and push on that side. That'd be really good. Just spend like a you know two three pound. It's not not too much to ask in a month. Um, can easily be done. So guys, just want to push on to the next bit now. And um, before we go to the Friday sermon by Umar, uh, you probably would have heard about this. It's such a big event. It's like massive actually. Um, it's the the God Summit. Um, um, I don't know if you've realized, but I just I just started looking at this logo just now, um, and just realized that the word Allah is also written in the logo. Um, so it's God Summit, but Allah is also here. You can tell by the Shadda and the vertical Fatha. Um, so this is happening this weekend, literally tomorrow and the day after. Um, so date and timing of summit. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. So Saturday, June and Sunday, June 10th. Um, stream will begin at 9.30. Uh, da, 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 what's the British time? So 2.30 p.m. So from 2.30, guys, do try to, to join in on that. I'll just quickly play a trailer and then we'll just learn about what it is because it basically stems from, um, you know, something which beloved Hazur um, always wanted to do. So it's time to come together like never before. 
The Review of Religions invites you to the first ever Global God Summit. Two incredible days you won't want to miss. So clear your calendars because it's time to take on the greatest questions of our existence, the God Summit. So yeah, it's going to be a huge one. There's, there's another trailer which I really liked. Um, but um, just to look and see what it is. So just quickly, we'll go here. Um, so um, the Real Religion is excited to present the first Global God Summit. Um, Chief Editor, going down a bit, the Review of Religions, Amr Safri says, the fifth caliph and worldwide head of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community um, has quoted the following statement made by the Promised Messiah, uh, where he says, the actual mission, so I'm just reading from here. So he says, the actual mission for which God has appointed me is to remove the estrangement that has come between a person and his creator and re-establish a relationship of God and sincerity between one and his Lord. So um, for, some of, for some time, His Holiness um, has been guiding the review of religions towards featuring a greater amount of content relating to the existence of God. This has resulted in the recent establishment of a dedicated section called the Existence Project. The God Summit was graciously approved by His Holiness in order to provide a unique platform for an international discussion on this topic over the course of one week. His Holiness guided that the first summit should be geared towards Ahmadis. Hence, we have been working closely with uh, presidents of the communities, various auxiliary organizations through different countries in order to tailor content towards the real and challenging question that people, especially the youth, have in their minds. Um, so it's all about the existence of God, and it's amazing, like it's such an incredible platform because it's international as well. So this first one is just basically geared towards Ahmadis. Um, and if you just scroll down, I don't know if you guys can see, there's so many topics, um, especially if, if you just want to learn. Um, and we all like to go through allegation corners as well. And we all have friends who are always asking about God. So, you know, proving God, that God exists isn't the easiest thing to do, um, but a lot of people ask about it. So all of these questions about suffering, about um, the blessed guidance of Hazrat Khalif to Masih, God in the workplace, prophecies in the future, how can I get God's attention? Um, is God a he taking a leap of faith? All these questions that people always ask and they're very, very common. So we can just literally click on them um, and we can get the answers right at our fingertips so um it's going to be amazing guys tomorrow 2 30 do try to join and i did try to um get zaid by to come on but he um, i think he's a bit busy with his family he's our original to believe nazim um but anyways um do try to join in guys it's going to be it's going to be wicked inshallah um so Zakla, it's moving swiftly on now um it's good to umar umar i think you wanted to to give your friday sermon summary it was about Hazrat, Hazrat Umar Razila Manhu. Uh, it's quite a long one. So if you can just summarize the summary, please. <laughs> if you can, Jazakallah. Asalaamu Alaikum. Awuz Billah Min Ash Shaitan Rajeem. Bismillah Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. So, yes, Murabisov, uh, as you correctly said, um, I believe. Um, at the Friday sermon was uh, by uh, about the Hazrat Umar. So, um, so Hazrat Khalif from Masi Ayyadu Ta'ala bin Nasir as he stated, I will continue to narrate about Hazrat Umar Rizitala Anho as Hazrat Abu Bakr Rizitala Anho approached near his demise, he called Hazrat. Abdul Rahman bin Auf Rizdalanho and sought his advice regarding Hazrat Umar Rizdalanho. He replied that he is even better 
that when that then what you think ex, then what you think except his nature is harsh. Hazrat Abu Bakr Rizdala Anhu replied that he is harsh because he is harsh because he sees that I am lenient. If leadership is granted to him, he will discard such matters because I see that when I am harsh towards someone, he wishes that I become pleased with him. And if I am pleased with, with someone, he advises me to be harsh towards him. Then Hazrat Abu Bakr sought advice from Hazrat Usman. He stated about Hazrat Umar that his inner being is even better than what, his, than what is apparent of him. Hazrat Abu Bakr advised both to keep this consultation confidential. In one narration, it is reported that Hazrat Talha Rizdalanho came to Hazrat Abu Bakr Rizdalanho and asked him that how could he appoint Hazrat Umar as the caliph while he sees how he deals with people. Hazrat Abu Bakr Rizdalanho asked for support to, to sit up. He said, Are you asking me to fear Allah? When I am present in front of Allah, will say that I have left the best person among your people as the caliph. History recalls that close to his demise, Hazrat Abu Bakr surmounted Hazrat Usman and wished and wished to write a will about the Khilafat of Hazrat Umar. When Hazrat Abu Bakr was, a, was about to speak, he fainted due to weakness. Of his own accord, Hazrat Usman Anhu wrote a statement about Hazrat Umar's appointment as Khalifa. When Hazrat Abu Bakr Anhu regained consciousness and found out what Hazrat Usman Anhu had written, he said that may Allah have mercy on you. Even if you have, even if you had written concerning yourself, you are deserving of it. Surely, I have appointed Umar as your Khalifa, believing that this is best for you. History records that people were gathered, and this will, and this, and this will was, and this will was read out in front of them. Hazrat Abu Bakr Rizdala Anho asked the people that you are that are you content with my appointment? I have not appointed my, I have not appointed any relative of mine. People replied, We hear and we obey. History records that before his demise, Hazrat Abu Bakr Rizdala Anho surmounted. Hazrat Umar Rizdala Anho and said that I have appointed you Khalifa over the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I advise you to have taqwa of Allah. O Umar, do you not, do you not see that the harsh and lenient, lenient verses of, of Quran have been a, a revealed simultaneously so that the believers are both inclined towards goodness and be afraid in their hearts. O Umar, do you not see that Allah has only mentioned the people of fire due to their wrong actions? When you mention such people, you should say that when you, when you mention such people, you should say that I hope I am not among them. Do you not see that Allah has mentioned the people of paradise due to their good acts? When you mention such people, you should ask yourself you should ask yourself whether my actions are like theirs. Hazrat Khalif Tumasi, the first Rizdala um, once said that people want that people once asked Hazrat Umar Rizdala Anho that your nature is not as harsh now as it used to be before accepting Islam. 
Hazrat Umar Rizla'an, who replied that it is still there, but it only manifests itself against the disbelievers. The Promised Messiah salam, once said to Hazrat Umar Rizla'an, who replied by saying that as, as opposed to before, now my strict nature works at, appro at appropriate time and place. Hazrat Muslim mode explains that once people said to Hazrat Abu Bakr Anhu that the appointment of Hazrat Umar Rizdala Anhu asked uh, as a caliph would result in, in, in destruction due to his, his harsh nature. Hazrat Abu Bakr Rizdala Anhu replied, when I am not present, he will become lenient. After the burial of Hazrat Abu Bakr Anhu, Hazrat Umar addressed the public. After praising Allah and his messenger, he prayed in these words, in these words, O oh Allah, I am weak, make me strong. I am harsh, make me gentle. I am, I am, I am, I am miss, I am, I miss, I miss Ali, make me generous. <clears throat> then he said to the people that Allah has tested me through you and, and has tested you through me. After both of my companions have passed away, he has kept me among you. By God, if any of your matter is presented in front of me, only I would judge it. And if it is far from me, I will appoint honest people for it. If people act with goodness, I will also be kind towards them. If they act in an immoral way, I, I, will, I, I will punish them. Jazakallah. Jazakallah, Umar. Well read. Um, so yeah, guys, just as you heard, it was the summary of the Friday sermon. Um, and it was just incredible. One of the key things for me was the pinnacle moment of when Hazrat Umar was elected as Khalifa, um, straight away people, <laughs> everyone became scared because they were saying to him, oh Umar, you know, during the time of the Holy Prophet you were strict on us, even in his presence, and even during the time of Hazrat, um, uh, Hazrat Abu Bakr as well. Um, and even before you were even a Muslim, we knew how strict you were. So now we're scared that you're going to be strict with us as a Khalifa. <laughs> so, um, so everyone got quite worried. Um, but then, uh, as he explained, you know, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu always trusted him, even though he was like a, you know, he was always like a walking sharp sword, as he as he described. Um, that he was so dangerous, but even then, he was, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu would always keep him close and basically was giving him his tirbiyat. Um And when he was elected Khalifa, he told them that now I'm I'm a changed person, and I will be soft and kind to those people who are soft and kind to me. But for those people who go against me or who, who choose to create this order, you know, those people will see, um, will see my, my strict side. Um, so we, as we know, every Khalifa is appointed for his time, um, especially during that time where there was so much friction between Muslims um, and it was building up and up and up. So it needed a head like him to sort of cool it down and bring it all together again. So this is why this was such an amazing moment. Um, even though he, if you read the, the accounts, uh, he didn't want to become Khalifa in any, not even for a second, um, to the point where him and Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Abu Bakr, sorry, were almost debating about um, why he should be Khalifa. And Hazrat Umar was saying, I don't want to be Khalifa, I can't do it, I can't take this role. And he never thought of himself to ever, um, to ever be the Khalifa of Islam. But then when he was elected, you know, he said to everyone, look, now I've been appointed to look after every single person. Before I wasn't. Um, so, of course, I will, I will adapt to, to everyone um, and make, make decisions. Um, and he said that no, no one's affairs will go, um, will go unnoticed from me. Um, and he said all the things that I can't do, I'll, I will appoint the most trustworthy people who can, um, who can deal with the situation. Uh, but he was such an incredible leader. Just if you think about it, it was all because of the Holy Prophet ﷺ and the way he took him under his wing and, and looked after him. Um, so yeah, guys, that was the Friday sermon. And 
<clears throat> credit, credit goes to beloved Hazur for for reading it because it's all the information which Khalifa Sani Rizalan who did all the research, all the all the you know all the hours and days and and you know the years that he spent collecting all of this. But only now it's coming to surface, and you know loads of people are benefiting from it. So you know Hazur, as he said, he spent so long writing his Friday sermons. Um, and to get everything historically correct and to be able to say it on this on a live stage you know it takes great courage um, but khalifa is guided by allah so we just need to listen to it and we just need to try and take it in um, and learn from from these words have uh, we have we uh, uh, have we talked about the uh uh i don't think you mentioned it oh should, should, should i tell a brief yeah, yeah, go for yeah. it. Yeah. So Azur basically it described the uh, this is about the love of Hazrat Aisha Rizatullah. So I believe like I I think it was during the time Hazrat Umar a new uh, wheat mill was created, and uh, from the uh, mill came like the one of the best uh, wheat uh, in the whole Medina, which was better than every other uh, wheat that was collected. So first uh, they decided that it would the first kind of a sack of it would be given as a present to Hazrat Aisha Rizya So as it was done, all the women uh, gathered in uh, Hazrat Aisha Rizya uh, house to kind of see uh, about the wheat. So what they kind of first thought that this wheat wouldn't be as good, but to, to their dismay, the wheat, uh, the, the roti that they made was actually really fluffy and re really soft. So they were really surprised that was that. So as Hazrat Aisha was e about to take a bite, uh, what they thought that she would kind of uh, be, uh, she would be really happy and she would really uh, enjoy it. But instead what happened was Hazrat Aisha Zatanano started crying. So they asked uh, why are, uh, why, uh, why Hazrat Aisha Zatanano, that why is she crying? Is, it the, is there something wrong with the uh, roti? But uh, she replied that no, nothing's wrong with the ro roti. But uh, eating this, uh, what I, I was reminded of uh, the time as a Muhammad Sallam, where was, he was really ill and he was really old and he could barely eat. So she had to uh, grind the wheat with rocks so he can properly eat. And uh, because of uh, eating this, uh, it has reminded her that so she started crying. She also requested this, uh, the roti to be taken away and she couldn't e eat it at all. So this shows the love Hazrat Aisha Rizat had for Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, exactly. I was actually, going, I was actually forgot to mention that because it was actually quite moving. Um, and I was remembered when I was listening to it, I was like, I couldn't believe. Um, I've never heard it before. I never heard um, the way Hazur explained it. Um, and it's so amazing that how much love Hazrat Aisha I had for the Holy Prophet that just this small thing uh, where everyone thought that she would be so happy about you know she she became so upset about because it reminded her of, of the Holy Prophet so I mean it was in the days where he was um, you know passing away so that's how much how extreme um, how much extreme love she had for him Zakla Qasim um, and Zakla for everyone who was involved in uh, doing the compilation of the summary uh, we're just going to end now with Kahoot's um, just before the match starts, so I'll go to uh, Daniel. If Daniel can load up the Kahoot, and inshallah, we'll end on that. Actually, gone over a lot much more than I thought it'd go to today. Seeming we didn't have any presentation for <laughs> for the news, we have just became longer this time. Can you go through the screen? Yeah, we can. I'll make it, I'll make an extra long one for next week. And I'll include the missed bits for today. Guys, has everyone got their vaccines on? I know, Kasim, you got yours done today, didn't you? Yeah, I had my first jab. Today. So how's it? Uh, it just... it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, other, other than like a uh, small pain from the injections, I don't feel it much. I'm having mine tomorrow, inshallah. Oh, mashallah. Did you get the AstraZeneca? Oh, no, I, I, I uh, had Pfizer. Pfizer, yeah. So I think they're saying a lot of the young people should get Pfizer now, shouldn't they? Yeah. Hmm. Who's not here? Have you got your one done? 
Yeah, I've got double one done. AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca. Yeah. That was all that was available for me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> no blood clots. You didn't have any side effects or anything, did you? Nah, it was bad the first day. It was not that great. Okay. On the first jab, but then on the second jab, it was, I was fine. So you felt it straight away on the first, after getting it? No, like about a few hours later, and then the night I was really ill, and then it was fine the next day. Really? Yeah. Okay. So you had you've had your second one. Is that was that two weeks after or eight weeks after? It was like three months. Four, eight, twelve. Yeah, three months. Okay, that's good, mashallah. So I want to get as much information as I can because I was I was in I was in Starbucks today and there was like a big debate going on with a few people on a table, and these old people were telling this young guy that are you going to get the this vaccine and he's saying no it's all a conspiracy and i don't want to do it and the, the old people were just laughing at him like what's what the hell is he saying so it was quite funny just listening to him and he was just saying random things like saying the government are going to put random things in it and it's gonna it's just all a hoax but anyways it's just it's a bit sad that people are still you know against it i think we'll start daniel we'll just go straight into it i think it will take about 10 minutes to finish Okay. Hassan Saab is also on the call, Jamal, mashallah. Probably driving, probably on a scooter, delivering. Shabazz the year, Shabazz Ankum. Guess the country. Oh, I think it's a bit too zoomed down, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure if you can see. Yeah, we can see it, we can see it. The red one, yeah? There's another red dot as well on the left. And I just made that, yeah, the other one's just, you know, like a guide. <laughs> uh, okay, Shabazz, so by the way, guys, he's a, he's a master at these quizzes. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> I think it was a login, though. <laughs> okay, so this logo represents which filming company? Uh, Pixar, Paramount, Fox, or TriStar? I think the answer's in name, isn't it? Mount. In the photo, you mean? Yeah, the photos. Well. Pixar is the light bulb <laughs> that kills yeah. the eye. Pixar is the big light bulb that jumps. Where is Thanos from? Computer. You know, uh, Mole has got a uh, Titan. Oh, Titan. Titan. Well done. Just watched it yesterday, you know. Which one? I watched. Um, I was watching Gardens of the Galaxy, the first one. What is this? This Levaya Khudab. Oh my. What? No change. No one got it right. It's the for us. What color is found on 75% of the world's flags? White, green, red, or blue? Oh, we did this. We've done this question so many times. Watch me get this wrong now. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna right. The correct answer is well, I think I think I, I won't go right because red is white, red. I mean <laughs> uh yes, cheeky. Yeah, <laughs> that's happened. Yeah, yeah, but I must say, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll think of the England flag. We're basically seventy five percent of everything. Who is the target audience for the Quran? Target audience. I mean, who is it for? Is it all people? Target audience was the Muslims at the time. Mashallah, sorry about that. Awesome, leading the way. Doctor Abdul Salam received a Nobel Prize in which field? Mashallah. There's only five people. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. <laughs> You're yeah. still on the leaderboard of the country. Where is the Aksa most located? Indonesia, Pakistan, Bangladesh, India. I don't even know where I clicked. I look Indonesia, I think. Come on, guys. You're all from Pakistan. Yeah, but which Aksa mask? Uh, the yeah, Rubber one. Yeah, Rubber one, yeah. Oh, okay. The one, the, the one in the photo, isn't it? <laughs> We've never seen it, though. What is this? 
What it says platelets, the DNA. DNA. How do you guys say that? Doxyribin. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Yeah. Or just say DNA. <laughs> yeah, that's why DNA said just say DNA. The first istama held of Qudamul Ahmadiyya. Oh, yeah, no, just... I should know this. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Trades are in the tunnel. Tarek magazine. Yeah, yeah I, I think it was like September, November or something. Mm. The binary system uses which two digits? Two, three, zero, one. Oh, matrix. One. How can you go the wrong one? No oh. idea, but that was. Two people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mostly, how did you get that right? I used to do computer science in primary. Which oh, yeah. character? Second G. Who made this quiz? Seriously, this is like child's play. And yeah, this is what the twelve quiz should be. The twelve is so yeah. much harder. Yeah, twelve <laughs> ones are so much harder. <laughs> One person still got it wrong though. Daniel, me, Daniel. Who wrote Harry Potter? Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Oh man! Oh my God, Daniel Radcliffe. Oh, He's the actor. <laughs> Oh, it's not coming home. Not coming home. Not, not with that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Cup, cup. Oh man. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I have no idea. Why, why, why does it like Captain Marvel? Loki's a boy. Man, Loki's a Iron Man daughter, so. Loki's yeah. Anti Loki. Guys, the play is <laughs> out, yeah. No way! I just too got that. Oh. Is that like the new episode? Yeah, that was. The yeah. Oh, I forgot. Which company produces? Oh Assassin's no Day no no no! no. Oh, Ubisoft. Oh, only one person got it right. But not Shabazz. He's not Shabazz. Not Shabazz. Not Shabazz. <laughs> not Shabazz. Okay. Let's all. Let's all. Let's all winning today. Let's all do the African. Um, uh, the Rana. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, when the when England the anthem is happening. <laughs> what name was originally used for this? Two What's these other names? Hadavan Digar. Oh man! I mean, I I play a game which has this city or oh, uh like come up occasionally right. because a lot of conquests happen in this country. Money auxiliary organization. Five. Oh, what are they just saying? Ansar, Ansar Khudam, Rajna, Nasrat, and Atfad. Where is this located? No idea. I think there are two correct answers. Burj Khalifa. Oh. I know no one go wrong. Why are there two answers? Yeah. Because you Dubai is in UAE, so that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, definitely disgusting. Definitely disgusting. <laughs> no, which organization is this? Oh. We've done this before, yeah. I know. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think it's the YouTube channel as well, like they have the same logo. Yeah. Canada is like, I think it's red. Been in the same place for so Last long. Last question. How many watts are in a kilowatt? Oh, come on, man. 6, 10, 000, 1, 000, oh. You should add more double point questions so that positions can change. Sure, yeah, we'll do next time. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you, you need to do better next time. Give a second. First, we have. Da, 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 da. Wow, Kasim Mashallah. Kasim. It's because of the jab. <laughs> yeah, it's giving me a boost. What a boost up for such a corner is coming from. Really? It's coming from. Oh, yeah. Cheers, guys. Jazakallah, everyone. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone, for joining. Jazakallah. We have the match starting now. So, the half is. Jazakallah. Peace. Peace.